Is this thing on? Hey YouTube. If you get this message, don't feel bad about this. Part of the journey is the end. And for the record, 3D printing a helmet on a small print bed in pieces isn't as bad as it sounds. The printer's been running for about four days now. And I'll be sanding until at least tomorrow morning. And when I drift off, I'll think of YouTube. It's always YouTube. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of 3DIY. This week on the show, I'm tackling the prop maker's rite of passage, the 3D printed helmet, specifically Iron Man's helmet. Now, I don't have one of those big 3D printers that you can get a helmet all out in one go on. So I hope this video inspires you, if you have a smaller printer, to try to print something big in multiple pieces and make something awesome out of it. That's what I'm doing. So without further ado, since this is a Thingiverse model this week, let's skip straight ahead to the 3D printing montage. All in all, the printing process for this build took, I think, four or five days? It was a lot to print and a helmet's no small job, but once I've got all the pieces printed out, I'm ready to glue them all together. When reassembling multiple part prints like this, I usually use a combination of CA glue, which is like a Gorilla Glue or Super Glue, Crazy Glue, you know, those kinds of things, and 5-Minute Epoxy, which I usually get at the dollar store. These both have their uses in this sort of situation, so if I have a more flush area where I really don't want to get any extra glue squeeze out, I'll use the CA glue, which is perfect for that. And if I've got an area with more of a with a bit of a gap where I could use some filler and some structure, the 5 minute epoxy is perfect. Once I have all the pieces glued together, I uh, notice something a little wonky with the mask here. Since I printed the faceplate in two halves, it seems as though uh, one of those halves started a little high, and so there's a bit of a, a bit of a gap right down the middle here. I actually have a piece about this exact size that's the start of one of these prints that failed, which is just like a beautiful serendipity in my opinion. So I will stick that between the two halves and I will glue that together and add a bunch of Bondo to fill in all the gaps. Let's talk about Bondo for a second because I've been uh, talking about different fillers a lot in my, di in my videos lately. I've been singing the praises of wood filler a lot over the use of Bondo, but for something like an Iron Man helmet, I definitely recommend using the Bondo. Because of the large size, the size of the gaps, and just the general similarities between Iron Man and a car, he's basically Car Man. And Bondo is car filler putty, so it's basically tailor-made for this task. So the Bondo is going to get a lot of good use, and then once I've done a hell of a lot of sanding, I'm also going to use some wood filler, because that does help smooth out the surface quite some. While I was working on the body filler and the sanding, the right cheek here, which printed too thin and with some serious gaps, pretty much broke. So I filled that whole area with some more Bondo and then I sanded that down, basically carving that down flat with the Dremel until I had reconstructed the shape that was missing. There's a little part of me, the perfectionist part of me, that doesn't like when this kind of thing happens. But at the same time, like knowing that there's like a piece of this, this model that was built by someone else that I actually did sculpt myself, I find that really satisfying. So it's nice to know that that's there and it looks pretty solid, more so than even the shield. I'm gonna spend a lot of time working on the sanding on this model because I really care about it coming out smooth. I mean, I don't see the point in making an Iron Man helmet and spending all of this time if it's gonna turn out not looking pristine, you know? Okay, after putting in an appropriate amount of man hours in elbow grease, I finally got the helmet to a smoothness that I'm happy with. 
which means it's time to paint. All right, first we start with one final layer of sandable primer. I found this really nice pale gold acrylic paint, which I want to use for the faceplate and the other gold sections on the helmet, but it's not actually airbrush paint. And since this is supposed to be a nice smooth metal car-like finish, I don't want to have any brush strokes on this surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the airbrush by thinning it with some alcohol. Now to be perfectly honest, I had a lot of trouble getting the ratio right here and I did end up with some spattering every now and then and just like a lot of work mixing and making sure that I got the ratio right. And then also a bunch of cleaning of my airbrush in between when it gets clogged. I don't enjoy cleaning a clogged airbrush, but I do love this color and I'm not regretting anything here. It turned out beautiful. All right, let's move on to the red of the helmet. I started to paint the red with the airbrush. When it occurred to me that the red spray paint that I used for the Hylian Shield project would actually be perfect for this. So I went and I got that, which I really did not regret because trying to use the airbrush to cover something this big is... Oh boy, well, it's not impossible, but it does take a long time and Andrew doesn't have the patience. Look at how much faster the spray paint goes on. Just, oh, it's on. Oh, there it is. It's all, it's all, all done. That's just beautiful. All right, after I've given that considerable time to dry, I've got a couple of extra details that I still need to add on. So I'm gonna mask out this sort of chin lower lip section, which is gonna be gold. And then I'll mix up some more of the gold paint and I'll spray that on there. And then this version of Iron Man's helmet has these little silver embellishments right around the cheeks. So I'll take out some rub and buff. God, I love this stuff. It's amazing. It's it's like alcohol and wax and metallic pigment all rolled into this little tube. It's perfect. So I'm gonna actually get that on a paintbrush, which is a little atypical, but I wanna be super precise and not have to mask anything off. So I just carefully brush that on until I've got a nice metallic look I'm happy with. Okay, and with that, we've got most of our Iron Man helmet done, but we're missing one crucial thing, eyes. I toyed around with a couple of different methods before I finally decided on how to make the eyes. Here, I'll walk you through it. My first idea was to carve the eyes out of a piece of clear acrylic. Now, I don't technically have a piece of clear acrylic around, but uh, I do have my old 3D printer that doesn't work anymore. Um, I mean, nothing. I didn't break my old printer to get this acrylic. I bought it at the store. So I did a little bit of experimenting, cutting out the shape of the eyes and the acrylic and uh, forming it with a heat gun to get a nice curve going. Now I did like the aesthetic of these pieces a lot, especially the second one where I had a bit of a lip to make sure that it fit inside of the eye perfectly, but this piece of acrylic was a little bit thin and so it didn't have as much pop as I liked. As much as I ended up liking these sanded frosted glass effects. Uh, acrylic eye pieces, I decided what I would do instead is 3D model the eyes in Blender and print them out in white PETG, which I know will transmit the light very nicely. So let's do that. Cut to a quick montage of me modeling the eyes. And here those are. My first version fit too exactly, and so the outside edge actually had a little bit of a gap from imperfections in the edges of the print. So I went back in and tweaked the model to extend a little further past the edges of the eyes and printed that again for these final pieces. Using a combination of sandpaper and the Dremel tool, I tried to smooth down these eyes as much as I could get them. Ultimately, I'm not the happiest with how these eyes turned out in terms of finish, but I love the shape I was able to get. I am planning on revisiting this model in a later video, and I think in that video I'm going to replace these eyes, possibly by casting them in resin? Let me know what you think in the comments down below about that. But now I've got the eyes, I will just hot glue these in place so that they stay nice and snug, and then we can move on to weathering. Right now this Iron Man helmet looks fresh off the line, and while that's fine, I like to think that I snuck into an Avengers battle zone 
and claimed my own actually used Iron Man helmet. So I'm gonna add some weathering and make this look a little bit more lived in. First I'm gonna mix up a medium brown kind of paint and dilute that a lot with water, slopping that all over the place, especially in the crevices and around the edges to get sort of a shading effect, and then dapping off all of the excess with the paper towel. I'll take that same effect all around the helmet. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna mix up a much darker, much thicker, less watered down paint and more sparingly do the same thing with that one to add another level of dimension to the grime. As a final touch, I'm gonna take some rub and buff and just lightly run that along a couple of edges to make it look like chipped paint has worn off on those corners. Now for the final detail, I wanna put some LEDs in the eyes and make this puppy's glow. So here in my old Nintendo Switch box full of spare electronics, I've got some LED strips. Now these can be cut along these specific points in groups of three which is actually just exactly the size of my Iron Man eyes. So that's perfect. These LED strips also come with these special connector strips to make things a lot easier, and they have these wires that bridge between them. I'm gonna use this as the basis of the wiring. I connect one of my LED sections to either end, and I'm gonna cut this right in half. And then what I'm gonna to wanna to do is connect the positive lead through this power switch that I stole from another device into this set of button cell batteries that are connected in sequence. Now I just connect the blue lead for the LEDs to the negative, since I only want these to glow blue, and booyah, we've got light. Now I'm just gonna kinda haphazardly tape this sketchy wiring setup to the inside of my helmet for now, because I do plan on revisiting the internals of this helmet in a future video. Give it a couple of upgrades. And with that, my Iron Man helmet is done. Alright guys, that's been it. This has been my 3D printed Iron Man helmet. Sorry, what was that, Doctor Strange? I seriously don't know how you fit your head into that helmet. Funny you should mention that. H how, how are you supposed to get a head in there? Jack, can you could you put your head in there? No. Put, try uh, to put your head in there. No, go ahead, try to put your head in there. It's... See, Ivan, he can't put his head in there. That's, that's, that's not a helmet, it's a head. Yeah, so funny story. I didn't actually measure any of this before I printed it. I just kinda took an assumption. And I don't know why I would since I have an abnormally large head and like all of my snapbacks fit on the last snap. So really I should have known better, but I'm gonna take this as a creative pivot opportunity and I want you guys to take a lesson from this because I am Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this helmet, head, thing, head, I'm gonna take this head, and I'm gonna put a Raspberry Pi in it, and I'm gonna make this into a Google Home. So stay tuned for a future video where I turn this guy into a Google Home with, uh, I'm thinking, like, the classic idea would be Jarvis, but Friday's been the thing right lately, so I think I'm gonna have it sound like Friday. And I'm gonna control my lights with it and have a smart home powered by Iron Man. So if you wanna see that video and other videos I've got planned for the near future, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notified every time there's a new upload. Now, it may take me a hot minute to drum up the cash to put the electronic components into this helmet, but if you wanna help support the show and help builds like this and others in the future, you can go to patreon.com and pledge a couple of bucks and get access to our special behind the scenes vlogs, as well as a Discord server so you can chat with me and other fellow 3D wires about 3D printing and prop making and all that good stuff. Plus, we just launched our merch store. So if you want a t-shirt or a sticker or a sweater or something with the 3DIY logo on it, we've got a couple of different designs in stock and you can check those out in the link down below too. Those are an excellent way to support the show. I've been Andrew Love and until next time, stay creative, you nerds.